Robert Keeley. Hello. Robert, so good to see you, man. Always great to be here at Sweetwater. Thank you so great much. To see you. Thank you so much for coming and bringing this amazing four in one distortion pedal series. I love these things, man. These are incredible. They are great. It allows me to get a bunch of sounds I've kind of had in my head or ideas I've had in my head about blending different kind of classic overdrive sounds yeah. and getting uh, kind of new combinations. But that's the thing that kind of shocked me initially upon playing all of them was just like the combinations, the new combinations. It's like, wait a minute, I wasn't expecting that at all. Right, <laughs> right. That, which is great, a great surprise. Lots you know, cause, of... Yeah, because you know you're getting two great circuits and two yep. great sounds. Right? Yep. And then you get these unexpected sounds when you when you mix them. Yeah, so, yeah, great cool. stuff, great stuff. So we've got the, the Noble Screamer, which yep. came out first. It's all, the Noble Screamer's been out a while. And that's the Nobel's uh, ODR-1 and a Tube Screamer, Exactly. Right? Okay, so that's the combination there. And uh, I love that you can change the tone stack and you can change the drive circuit. Exactly. So yeah, this is where it, it all kind of started. Right. And we put two uh, very common uh, pedals from, from the Nashville area or, yeah. or <laughs> beyond that. Right. But we knew we had some very picky people involved in determining whether we got the circus to sound right. Yeah, yeah. So I, we put those together and kind of proved our, our concept of, hey, you can take these two uh, very well-known drive sounds right, and right. things that people are very particular about. Yeah. You know, the nuances of those d drive sounds are yeah. very well understood. <laughs> yeah, well, and you nailed it, the Nashville thing too, man, because that yeah. those are the two Nashville sounds right there yeah. for sure, man. Exactly. Um, okay, so next up here, we've got the Super Rodent, mm -hmm. which is an SD-1 and a Rat. Exactly. Man. That's a fun combination. Yeah. You got an overdrive and a distortion. Yeah. One is soft clipping, one is hard clipping. Yeah. And one one has a, you know, an active type tone control and the other one's a passive filter. Yeah. So you get all kinds of fun combinations. <sighs> yeah, that's amazing. A lot of good stuff in that. And then just one of the most useful combinations I could possibly ever imagine. Right. We've got a blues breaker and an O C D, which is like, wow. Yeah. What a great sound in yeah. the blues disorder. Exactly. That one has the blues breaker up on top mm -hmm. and the OCD circuit un underneath. Yeah. Again, it's a really powerful combination because some, those are some of the most sought after tones or yeah. common tones right. in in the guitar you know world. So uh, it was uh, almost a no brainer putting those together, and it yeah. works out that one of them's hard clipping, one is so soft clipping. They have two different tone controls, yeah, and uh, so you get all kinds of great new sounds. Wow, that's amazing! And then the the big surprise, the one that <laughs> I wasn't even expecting at all, the Angry Orange, which is a DS one and a Big Muff. Yeah. It's like not a, not only yeah. not just any old DS one, okay. but but we were kind of going after the Wazacraft stuff. I think the oh, Wazacraft okay. stuff is genius, yeah. and uh, sounds great. Agreed. And we had so many different muffs to choose from. Right. So I was searching for something unique yeah. and something that players wanted, yeah. you know, and yeah. so the Civil War Big Muff comes oh. out. And that kind of explains the the funny name here, yeah. Angry Orange. The other ones yeah. kind of are 
a little bit more obvious. This one's not so obvious. Yeah, you know right, I mean? right. So you got a Civil War Big Muff and yeah. a DS-1 Waza Craft, and you have a, an Angry Orange. <laughs> yeah, indeed you do, man. And those two, wow. Those two, like, I would have never expected that combination. That's killer. It, it's man. really surprising. Sounds great. Sounds yeah. great. Okay, Robert, let's look at him individually, yes. shall we? Let's start sure. with the uh, Noble Screamer here. Let's give it a listen, man. I'm going to start just with the uh, bypass tone, and we're right. playing the uh, Supro, the Keeley Supro. Yes, Very that's nice. the 1968 yeah. RK with the 12 inch. Right, with the 12. I like it with the 12. Yes. <laughs> Great. So here's our ODR yeah. sound. You can see that, that the spectrum control rather yeah, on right. this is the tone control. Right. And then this has a soft clipping and a hard clipping section. Yeah, right, right. Here's the highly focused tube screamer sound. Right. Yep. Classic. But you can get some fun sounds if you use the OD clipping, the hard uh -huh. clipping, right. into the Tube Screamer tone control. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice, Isn't that man. Great? Yeah, what that a great is, hybrid. It really is. Wow, because I, I was expecting the low end to sound completely different than that. Exactly. That sounds great, man. I remember that you guys had a couple of golden samples that you were working with, mm -hmm. with this, right? Is yes. that, so was that, were you, were you kind of matching that sonically? Is that sort of where you were exactly. going with Exactly, we, we purchased about three of the uh, ODR1 mm -hmm. uh, pedals mm -hmm. and quickly realized that, that they started to sound different from each other. You know, sure. you could have sure. either maybe errors in the building or, or something like that. Yeah, so. component, you know, mm -hmm. variations Bands. or whatever, yep. I'm, yeah. So, we sorted out which one was the, kind of the best one and the correct one. Yeah. We went we went to Nashville and we hung out with the guys there during the development of the Halo pedal, and we yeah. and, and we handed out the uh, our Noble Screamer attempts, and they're like, yeah, yeah, it's pretty good, you know. Yeah. Then we developed a little special switcher that allowed us to compare to our pedal to a variety of ODR ones and having in different loops. So we went back out there pretty convinced. We got a bunch of new analyzers at the shop. Oh, nice. And uh, so put all those together so that we knew we had the sounds nailed in, in terms of the feel, yeah. the way it sounded, the frequency response, the hiss levels, everything. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and you know, and, and from a player standpoint, it's always about the touch and the response and the sustain and all exactly. that sort of stuff. And if you get all that right, man. Yes. So we, yeah. we were pretty convinced and we brought our whole uh, rig out to, to Nashville <laughs> nice. and we got the blessings of literally everyone. You know, yeah, I, that, yeah. That's it, <laughs> yep, I can't tell. <laughs> yeah, I so. remember you brought that rig here and I had the same reaction, <laughs> like wow, this is unbelievable. Yep. Yeah, really good. So this is the one that started off the whole series. It is. It's like yeah. the proof of concept. Yeah. It's like we can, yeah. we can nail you know, vintage pedals and, and get the approval from the pros that listen to these things and depend on these things to make their songs. Yeah, I mean? right. Hit right. singles or do their recordings. Exactly, you know? man. It's a tool that you're using at work, man. It's right. kind of important at that point, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, killer, man. It sounds really great. All right. Next in our lineup. Yes. Super Rodent. Oh, man. I, when this I heard killer. about this one, I was really excited. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's so many fun things about this one yeah. because in picking out these two pedals, mm -hmm. uh, I was playing with some of the ideas on which ones stacked together well. Sure. Frequently you'll see people stack an SD1 and a RAT together. Sure, sure. Knowing the whole time that you can't stack those two pedals <laughs> <laughs> in my design. <laughs> so there was that added little twist like, like no, you can't do that with my pedal. <laughs> but you can get new sounds that you couldn't get by stacking. Yeah, So. yeah. Yep, we put the SD1 in here, which is kind of like the full drive too. Yeah, yep. right. It's a hot rodded tube screamer. Yep. And then the legendary Proco Rat. Yeah. Down down below. Yeah. So that gave us our soft clipping and our hard clipping. So we had two different drive sections that, that people can use now. Right, right. Th that's one of the requirements kind of in this four in one series is yeah. to give people legitimate changes. Right. To where, to where it is actual changes, not just like a tweak or whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's like this no, this is completely different. I tell you, all the tone stacks and all of these sound completely different. 
It's, it's awesome, it's, isn't it? It really is awesome, man. It's, 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 it's the best kind astounding. of mod, really. Yeah. Because a, a mod might move a component or two, maybe right. three. Right. You know? Yeah. But this is swapping out, you know, entire sections. Yeah, exactly. Here's cool. our classic SD1 then. And then the rat. <laughs> Isn't that great? That's great, man. So they, so they actually good. make a great pair, too. So back yeah. to the SD1 for just a second. Yep, yeah. it has the characteristics of the soft clipping. It's, right. it's smoother. Right. This is a little edgier. But what if you added an active tone control to it and you wanted some more bass with that, some more girth? Then flip this up. Woo! Yeah. Man. <laughs> Golly, man, that, <laughs> dude, dude, that, that makes, was great play. Well, thanks, man. That makes the, the high step really juicy. I oh, mean, like, it was so really fun. Really juicy. Wow. Isn't that great? Nice. Those are nice. some of the great unexpected results, though. You know, yeah. when when you're moving, this this had its own tone control. The right. TS9 has its own right. tone control. This one was uh, quite a bit of a difference because the SD1 is active and the filter on the rat is passive. So that was... That was the first time in this series that we encountered that. Uh, yeah, difference. yeah. I was, man, I was going to say it's it's interesting because just in general about distortion pedals, we know that a lot of them share a lot of the same mm -hmm. sort of concept and sort of the same thing. But it's but it's really in the details is where things get things get wildly different. So when you start combining these things and you yep. want to capture all those characters, it's like, wait a minute, how do we grab that detail over here? Mm -hmm. And how do we, yeah, it's just, so wow, what a puzzle, man. That is what's fun about this four in one series is that the way distortion and overdrive pedals are typically built, almost mm -hmm. all of them are built this way, mm -hmm. is that the drive section or the clipping section comes first, yeah. and then you refine the tone and the, the high frequency content right. after that. Because right. distorting things actually causes a lot of high frequency content to be generated. Yeah. So that's why the tone control is kind of after, right. after that. <laughs> That's classic, man. That's that's with a typical uh, SD1 active uh, tone control. Yeah, it's a a, a low pass filter, an adjustable low pass filter. Right, so, right. But if you put to if you put it to the rat sound, uh -huh. that is a filter, just a simple RC filter. Oh, and it has okay. a much different yeah. kind of. There's with the wow. yeah. There's with the SD1 tone control, and then with the rat filter control. Oh, oh man, that what a different sound, huh? Boy, sure as it drives the amp a completely different way. It does. Completely different. It does. Interesting, man. Yeah, and it's funny because like when you obviously with guitar, guitar's mid-range based, right? You know, yeah. so so anytime you start screwing around with the mid-range, you know, you're gonna lose <laughs> volume. But I like that, I like that like it seems like on all these pedals, like the like unity gain is pretty close to the center, so you got yep. a lot of ways to work either direction. If you want to drive the amp harder exactly. or not as hard, or you want this circuit louder or whatever, man. Exactly. Cool. So yeah. some, some sometimes when the sound might be a little bit more mid range forward, mm -hmm. uh, th that's usually an indication to me that hey, I could probably push my amp with that and get a lot of sustain. Right. If, if I just use the level more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, yep. that's cool. Wow, what a great sound, man. Four sounds right there, killing, man. Next up, the All Blues right. Disorder. Ooh. Nice, the Blues Disorder. Yeah. This is a fun one. I wanted to put together two of the most popular <clears throat> sounds, mm -hmm. classic sounds, mm -hmm. and that you know immediately takes you to the Blues Breaker, right. which is like the King of Tone or the Morning Glory. Sure. Then the classic OCD. So I put both of those pedals in there. 
figured I'd have the guys that want the lower gain, you know, yeah. type of sounds, the, yeah. the more amp-like response right. with right. the way it has a very subtle compression. It, yeah. it happens to yeah. be the, the soft clipping unit yeah. in, in, right. this, in this equation. Mm -hmm. And then I paired it with the OCD, which has a lot of uh, not only op amp clipping, but it's got a real strong push in the mid range. Yeah. So that separates it from the blues breaker completely. Right, right. And it's it, a lot of harmonic information in the OCD. Exactly. Man, it really is. Even at lower gain settings, you know. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah. op amp clipping in there. Yeah. In, in the, the hard clipping on that side. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, two, I mean, you know, two great sounds for sure individually. And then. We'll get into the combination too, you yes. know, the, the, the change up. I like the change up. Yep. Okay. Here's so a typical blues breaker type of sound. Then. Okay. Great. Yeah, okay. right away, right away. That's a great low gain sound. Yeah. Yep. Really good. Yeah, really nice. The man. OCD, okay. the OC side. Go back to the humbucker. Much higher gain. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> There's that yep. tone, man. Exactly. Golly, we know that one well. Yes. Yep. Ooh. That's the high, that's the hard yeah. clipping in yeah. that side. Mm -hmm. So. The OCD also has this very interesting tone stack. It's different the, than the blues breaker side. The blues breaker side is kind of a typical uh, low pass filter. Okay. The um, OC side of our pedal incorporates the, like, I think it's nearly 10 dB boost in the mid range that acts as almost like gain stacking when you hear wow, it. So let's listen yeah. to that here. So here's a typical blues breaker sound. Okay. With the soft, soft, right. soft clipping. Yep. Yep. Now, if we put that uh, forward pushed mid range of the OCD in there. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Isn't that credible? Yeah, that, it man, is. that's really something. I think it's a great sound. Boy, it People sure... seem to really gravitate towards that hybrid man. when they're like, hey, this sits well in the mix. It sure does. Not only that, it's still, boy, the dynamic range on it is like, I could tell just from hitting one chord, I was like, yeah. whoa. That's the, the, the blues breaker side of the clipping is like that. Nice, yeah. 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 Isn't Ooh. that great? That is so, great, man. Wow, what a sound. I'm going to start with the OCD hard okay. clipping. Yeah. But then we're going to move out that high gain tone control okay. and go back to yeah. the typical drive uh, pedal and see what happens. Okay, all right. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> wow. That's a lot of boost in that tone control circuit. Man, it sure is. And it pushes can, up all that mid range was, so you get all that sustain. I was getting ready to say, you can really hear where the push is. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's something. It That's is. something. So. Okay, so indulge me here for a second. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to uh, let's go back to this. Let's turn the drive down. Yep. Turn the level up, and see. Now that's interesting because it's it's got you know with the hard clip thing yep. right as opposed to the you know the soft clipping you know when you set a lower gain thing like that you still got that dynamic range but it's like more like you know it's more yeah. it's a little chunky. Little edgier. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. I noticed that you like yeah. the rat, the hard clipping on the rat too. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That, that is a fun thing. Yeah. I think uh, when you switch between those two tone controls, you might have to just turn the treble up just a little bit. Right. Right. You know, the OCD has so much gain added to it. Sure. <laughs> sure. That, sure. Uh, that's the only thing you need to do to kind of equalize that hybrid sound. Right. Well, that's but that's the that's the beauty of really having like two completely separate circuits in the same pedal is that they do sound and operate completely differently. So yeah. you, so they're gonna drive your amp differently and they're gonna have a different result. You yeah. know? So it's like you can use the knobs to compensate if you want them closer, mm -hmm. but you don't have to. You can have them be like yeah. really disparate if you like, which is great, man. It is great. Yeah. I noticed a lot of people 
even on the blues breaker, especially on the OCD, when mm -hmm. they talk about those circuits in general, they'll they'll say, hey, the way I use my OCD is I actually use it for a clean boost. I turn the driveway down, yeah. turn the level up. Right. And then there's the other crowd that's like, oh, no, I love the distortion in that thing. Mm -hmm. And so not only do you get that same exact response in our pedals, because we built the entire circuit in yeah. there, not yeah. just a mod to a blues breaker circuit right. to make it sound like an OCD. Right. No, we have both circuits in there. And then you get the possi the possibilities with the hybrid modes. Yeah, yeah. Man, and overall though, seriously, that's what's brilliant about this whole series to me is that, you know, I mean, I, I'm sure you're I'm sure you're somewhat limited and it can't just be like, you know, you can't just create entire circuits of any sort right. stacked together. Because we were we were talking earlier, yeah. you were talking about why there's not a clon. Yes. Right. And yes. why there's not a and blues why driver. there's not a blues driver. Okay. Yes. So explain that. that Okay. That's great. That was great. The, in both the Klon and the uh, Blues Driver, the okay. Boss Blues Driver, mm -hmm. those two pedals in particular use what's called a dual potentiometer. There's two uh, lugs for the potent potentiometer for, oh, okay. for that you control at the same time. All right. Yeah. yeah. And in that design already. So in other words, it controls the gain in two different areas at the same time. Yeah. Well, part of our concept is that I had to design a dual potentiometer for each and every one oh, here so that wow. they could control mm -hmm. each circuit at the same time, simultaneously. Right. right. So I didn't uh, have the space for a triple uh, yeah. gained <laughs> potentiometer yeah. to fit in there. So yeah. you can't do a clon or a, a blues driver in this type of thing where you're swapping out right. tone controls, tone stacks and drive right. sections. Yeah, but but to like kind of piggyback on that a little bit, that's sort of what the Muse driver is because that started yeah. out life as your as your modded blues driver. Exactly. So in that case, we are switching out diodes with that yeah. switch that's underneath the drive, mm. and we're making modifications to the blues driver tone control. Right, right. Because the blues driver, the, the Muse driver is yeah. the blues driver. Right, <laughs> right, right. Well, and and man, and just we're you know kind of back to the whole format concept, right? I mean, I just love how you can do this where it's like, okay, we can stack two separate things, or you can do like what you did with the Muse driver. Yeah. Which is just you know two separate. I mean, the same circuit, but it's like, okay, we're going to change out some components on the circuit. Yeah. Simple yeah. mods. Yeah, it's great, yeah. man. Really good. And that and part of that is your enclosure, right? That yes. you have now. The enclosure is really fun. It's it's helped us kind of appear, yeah. you know, a reappear in a in a new set of clothes. And yeah. it, <laughs> yeah. it really fits yeah. you know what's on the inside because mm -hmm. we've got a I've got a decade of working with my engineers now. We've plowed through so many circuits. And we've encountered so many things that we're yeah. really pretty darn good now. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah we're I'd really say, good. I'd say and that's an when, understatement. <laughs> and then when you get with Andy Timmons and you yeah. have an artist that's that's able to explore the vast ranges of mm -hmm. your creations, you know, then then things are really good. So it, it's perfect timing that you know we're making our own enclosures in house now, yeah. and it it helps yeah. visually set us apart and allows us to. Uh, you know, kind of reimagine ourselves in terms of the graphics. Yeah, well, and they're sharp looking too, man. I mean, I love the color coded knots. It's so fun. It's great, man. Really yep. cool. All right, um, let's take a look at the Angry Orange, great. shall we? I think we great. should. I think we should. So, this is the DS1 yes. and Waza. a Big Muff. Yeah, the yeah. Waza DS1 <laughs> and the Civil War Big Muff. Right. To be, not, not to put too fine a point on it. That's right? right. I love this name, Angry Orange. Yeah. And uh, it just so happened to fit. We were trying to figure out exactly which muff we wanted to combine yeah. with the DS1 because there's uh, an interesting similarity between uh, Big Muffs and DS1 pedals. And that's in the tone stack, believe it or not. Man, I would have never guessed. I know. It's funny, I was telling you earlier that, you know, I get to work with a variety of people. During the development of this, I was talking to Chris Benson about it. Mm -hmm. And when I told him I put a big muff and a DS1 together, I didn't even finish the sentence and he turned to me and he's like, they have the same tone stack. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I know yeah. they're voiced differently, yeah. but they are technically the same kind of tilt control, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so that's what's so fun about putting these combinations together because when I was trying to put this together, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted two yeah. really powerful sounds together, right. obviously. Right. Yeah. But uh, I was, I was at first, I was a little apprehensive because I was like, well, those are very similar in nature on the tone control side. Right. You know? oh, but on the clipping side. Yes. It's totally yeah, different. Yeah, completely different. Yep, yeah. Totally different. Yeah. And, you know, for us knucklehead guitar players, mm -hmm. that, you know,
you know, that don't understand circuits. It's like, yeah. this is what, this is another thing about this whole series that's fascinating to me is that you can just imagine it in your head. You're like, oh, those two could possibly work together because of this, that, yeah. and the other. And I'm, I'm, I'm just like going, hey, that sounds really good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sometimes you want it to be, uh, you know, polar opposites of each yeah, other, you know, right. like the SD1 and the RAT, you would think those are quite a bit different, yeah. or the OCD oh. and the Blues Breaker. Yeah, the, yeah from different. a sonic, sonic standpoint, those are like miles apart, yeah. you know, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. and those two are pretty far apart too, man. Yeah. Even though they're both higher gain, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, wow, the way, the way you think about like how you would use them, yes. you know, musically, it's like, yeah, completely different context. Exactly, if you're wanting that wall of fuzz type sound, like a Smashing Pumpkins yeah. type of thing, yeah. yes, it's definitely Definitely, a DS one's not going to get you there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's, right. <laughs> that's that's big muff only. <laughs> yes. But uh, it's surprising what Boss has done with the Waza sound and how they've carved out that new sound because they're they're actually designed quite a bit differently uh, than than the first generations or the no earlier generations. Kidding. Yeah. No kidding. I guess so, I didn't really realize that because it's like they just sound like the Waza craft stuff to me sounds like a refined version. Yeah. You know, which I know that was their intention. Yeah. Right. But but from a design standpoint, they're different. Interesting. Uh, on the uh, the blues driver yeah. stays the same. The SD one and the DS one mm -hmm. are uh, for sure. I know that those changed quite a bit. Wow. I know. Okay. All right. They Inside baseball. I yeah. like it, man. I like. <laughs> they it. did a great job. <laughs> yeah. No kidding, man. <laughs> That is, that is, that's very it's a, juicy. It's a little less gain than some of the other big muffs, the Civil yeah. War is, the soft tech ones of uh, a different sound. Right, the ones. right, yeah. Yeah, and the soft tech ones seem to be a little uh, little punchier and a little yep. crunchier almost kind of. Yeah, you know, it's, a, it's yeah. a fun sound. Yeah, it's The, a great the sound transistors band. that they used in there did have a big difference in the way that that sounds compared to other ones, especially an op amp muff. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But, and then here's the uh, DS1. <laughs> The reason why the DS1 is 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 the um, one of the most popular drive pedals, distortion pedals of all time, right? It's a great mm -hmm. classic sound. It is, it is, and it's it, um, you know to be that much gain, it's pretty even across the spectrum. Yep. You know, like when you're playing, a, you know, like the low notes aren't too woofy and the high notes aren't too screechy and yeah. you know, all that sort of stuff. If you get the right one now, some <laughs> of those mid 2000s ones can. Yeah. Eh, <laughs> yeah exactly. Eh, <laughs> <you know. laughs> well. So then we get the fun part here yeah. now that the the Big Muff and a, a DS1 share a similar topology for the tone control. In other right. words, they're drawn the same. Way, right, right. Right. But, but the values sure, are different. I was going to say, it sure does sound the same. The values are different. Yeah. yeah. So here, here's yeah. a typical Muff sound. Okay. Then if we change the tone stack out. There's Man, the one. Yeah. Wow. Those are fun sounds. Yeah, those are great, man. Those are great. Okay, notice that? There's no popping. Yeah. Right? This thing is in buffered mode. Oh, there you the, go. The, the 4-in-1 series, uh, they all ship in uh, buffered bypass mode. Nice. But if you have good reason to be in mm -hmm. true to have a true bypass pedal, mm -hmm. let's say you've already got a buffer that you really like. Let's say for whatever reason you've yeah. got a vintage pedal that wants to play with only true bypass pedals. Yeah. All you have to do is press and hold down for two seconds and it'll flash at you twice saying, I'm now in true bypass. bypass. Interesting. Yep. And get that familiar. Right, you can hear it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. You hear the engagement. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's that simple to be either true bypass or silent buffered bypass with nice. the new four in one series. Nice, man. And I gotta say too, for what it's worth, I mean, you know, buffers regardless, they have sort of a sound to them, yeah. you know, to some extent and man, I'm. I don't know. I don't want to say I can't hear it, but I can't hear it. You know what I mean? I cannot hear your buffer. Your buffer sounds great, man. 
you must not work for me because the people in my <laughs> office know that this buffer sounds really darn good. I agonized over that uh, forever. Um, yeah. You know, you're in the midst of trying to work with some of these classic sounds like the SD from yeah. the Super Rodent or yep. the DS right. from the Angry Orange. And uh, Boss has got a world-renowned effects pedal line. Their buffers were good enough. If it was good enough for Prince, yeah. <laughs> probably good enough for right. a lot of other people, right? <laughs> right. I wanted right. to be able to say, no, our, be our buffers are better than, at least in some way, than Boss. So we worked very hard to make sure that the loss through these, even a series of six, seven, eight of these mm -hmm. things, all in buffered mode, mm -hmm. are gonna preserve your signal and be as close to 100% originally intact as possible. Man, and you nailed it. I mean, seriously. We worked hard at it. Because that's the thing, I can usually, when I plug something on it, I can hear the buffer yep. and I either like it or I don't, right? Mm -hmm. And when you can't hear the buffer, it's like, oh my gosh, oh, it's perfection. Totally important yeah, to me. It, man. If you have people like Andy Timmons and you know anybody <laughs> yep, else out sure. in Nashville that uh, are very used to the way their amp and rig sounds, mm -hmm. and then you put something in there that when it's off, they can. They're going yeah. like, wait, wait why don't a I feel good anymore? You yeah, know? I don't like this now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's great, man. That's another thing that you can actually do to make our buffer sound even better. So all of the four and one series mm -hmm. is designed to work from anywhere between nine and eighteen volts. If you put eighteen volts to our pedals, mm -hmm. you will enjoy the benefits of a higher headroom, right. and that includes even in buffered mode, people with keyboards or um, active bases, 18 volt active bases, there's no danger of them clipping or creating unwanted distortions through our buffer circuitry. So yeah, wow. if you're gonna put this in a pro rig or you're gonna have some high energy instruments going into it, right. you can take advantage of that 18 volts design. Wow, yeah. man, that, there's a hidden gem right there because that's like, I mean. It's huge. Yeah, that is gigantic. Not only does it make wow. the pedal sound better, but yeah. it's just better for you. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Even when the pedal's off, it's going to be better. <laughs> it's just better. It's just better for you. Plus, you I always mean, have an 18 volt port open, right? That you're yeah. like, what do I do with yeah, this? Right. Well, you put it to me, your Keeley drive pedals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go, man. Robert, oh my gosh. That was so fun, dude. Man, thank you so much. <laughs> These are awesome. Congratulations. It's, wow. it's so fun creating at, at this level with my team and putting all these sounds together. Yeah. I've got the artists, I've got the engineers, I've got all the equipment. It's it's really living a dream. Yeah, I believe it, man. I and can it get shows. all these ideas out that are in my head. Yeah, I know, and it shows because the results are just spectacular, man. Yep. This is this is a great series, and again, congratulations, man. Thanks. Awesome, nice stuff. Thanks for being here. Appreciate really it. Appreciate <laughs> it, man. Thanks everybody for watching. And uh, if you have any questions about any uh, about these pedals or any Keeley products, make sure to contact your Sweetwater sales engineer or check us out at Sweetwater.com. Thanks. Mm -hmm.